morning, dear friends. Greetings to all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am so glad to uh, be with you during these few minutes of meditation, meditating on God's Word. And may today's meditation strengthen you and enlighten you and bless your heart that you may live in the fullness of all what God wants you to be. Praise God. We shall continue the study. Yesterday we con considered the life of Zacchaeus and what Jesus did for him. And we will continue and we think of another aspect. Why it is necessary for us to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ and that one meeting is enough to change our whole life. And his story is found in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 19 verses 1 to 10. And I hope you have read it after yesterday's meditation and you are familiar with this passage. Though Zacchaeus was a son of Abraham, by his transgression, he forfeited the Abrahamic blessing which should have come in his life and upon him. But he forfeited the Abrahamic blessing and uh, by making himself unworthy of his blessing. Now, why should Christians should have a greater compassion and mercy for those who are still living in transgression and in sin? And the answer is, such a person is a slave of sin or slave to sin. A servant is different from a slave. A slave, a servant is a wage earner. He works for someone to earn his wages. He is owned by nobody. If he wants to work, he can work. If he doesn't want to, he, that is his choice. But a slave is not in that condition. A slave, on the other hand, is owned by a master who paid in order to buy a slave and his family, if he has a family. Even his wife and children are the properties of the master who paid in order to buy them. He cannot exercise his own will. He has no will of his own. And um, those living in sin are like that. They are actually owned by the devil who makes him a slave to sin. And that is why we need to be more compassionate and merciful towards them, knowing that they do what they do and react or respond to the gospel message the way they respond. It's all due to uh, the master, the sin or the devil. Now, those living in sin are slaves to sin. That's what Jesus told the Pharisees who prided themselves saying, we are no slave to anybody. We are free. And to this, Jesus told them, anyone who is a sin in his life is a slave to that sin. And according to Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30, we are told that God has a dream for each one of us. He had a dream for Abraham, that Abraham would be the father of all the faithful. And uh, it was also God's dream for Abraham that Abraham will become the source of great blessings to many nations. Now God had a, God had a dream for Jacob that he would be the father of all 12 tribes of Israel. 
he had a dream for Joseph that uh, he be the second in command in the kingdom of Egypt after Pharaoh the king. And God revealed to him his dream for Joseph in dreams. Joseph could have puffed up himself and uh, be very proud and thus he could have destroyed himself. So God was protecting him from ruin by what he went through, Joseph went through. It was a necessary, it was a necessary process to protect Joseph, Joseph so that he will reach Egypt as a slave. Uh, you see him pleading for his life to his brothers. But they were so cruel to him. And then they sold him to the Ishmaelites, traders who were traveling to Egypt. And so he found himself to be sold again in Egypt to a high official under Pharaoh, Potiphar. Later, he found himself as a slave in Potiphar's house. Then as a prisoner, he was put in prison, accused of a wrong he has never committed. All the while, where was God and what was God doing? God was working out his plans to see his dream for Joseph be fulfilled by making him, making Joseph the interpreter of dreams of others. While his own dream for himself lying in front of him in a million pieces. But we see God working by giving a dream to Pharaoh, which no wise men or uh, magicians of Egypt could interpret. Meanwhile, Joseph interpreted two officials' dream, who was put in jail, who was serving under king. Who, who, and these two officials displeased the king and they were put in prison. And one night, both of them had dreams. And in the morning, they were downcast and they were so uh, sullen. And um, so Joseph saw them in that condition and asked, what happened to you? And both of them said, we had dreams. And the dream is troubling us. We don't know what it means. One was the baker who baked all the bread for the king. And the other was a cupbearer who would place the wine in king's hand. And so both of them had this dream. And Joseph heard the dream and he interpreted the dream. And after three days, it ha exactly happened to both of them as Joseph interpreted. And now Pharaoh had a dream. He had a two, two dreams with the same meaning. But he could not understand the meaning of the dream. And he was troubled by the dream. So he called all the wise men and magicians and uh, they could not interpret it either. Now what was happening? God was behind that dream. Why? because Joseph must be brought to the palace before the king. That was God's dream for Joseph. And when these magicians and wise men could not interpret, suddenly the cupbearer of uh, uh, the king remembered Joseph. You remember when he was set free from the prison, Joseph pleaded with him. When you are free and when you will be serving again the wine to the king, please remember me and mention my name to him and try to set me free. But the cupbearer forgot about uh, Joseph altogether. But there is a God in heaven who never forgot Jacob. 
And it was in fact this God who brought him to Egypt through all those steps that he was going through. And um, suddenly he mentioned Joseph's name and Joseph was brought from the prison. And he heard the dream and uh, he interpreted for Pharaoh his dream. And what was the result? Suddenly, Joseph was promoted to the second highest position in entire Egypt, only next to Pharaoh the king. From prison to the throne. And that was God's plan for Joseph. That was God's dream for Joseph. And why? Because Joseph's presence in Egypt was necessary during those famine days in order to save Joseph's family and the entire household, including Jacob, now an old man. Joseph brought them to Egypt. You know the story. And that was God's plan. He became the savior of not only Egypt, but many other cities around Egypt, including Canaan. And my friends, thus God's dream for Joseph was fulfilled. He saved Egypt from total destruction along with some neighboring cities. And my friends, I want you to know that God has a dream for you and for me. What could be that dream? Let me read to you. It is expressed in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30. We are told here, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have, um, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined, to be conformed to the likeness of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined he also called. And those he called he also justified. And those he justified he also glorified. What is God's dream for you and for me? If we love him. And if we serve him, if we are following, remember, God has a dream. And until that dream is fulfilled in your life, God's dream for you, he will continue to work. What is the dream? That you may be conformed to the likeness of his son. That is his dream for all of us, my friends. He wants all of us who love the Lord Jesus Christ and love God to be like Jesus. And when we stand before Jesus when he comes, we shall be like him. We should look like, look like Jesus. That is his greatest dream for you and for me. And my friends, to reach this goal, God by his Holy Spirit is working in me and in you. We must be aware of this truth. And that's why every day we must yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. He keeps on changing me, taking me from one level to next higher level in our relationship with him. From victory to victory, from glory to glory, until I am patient as Jesus Christ is patient. Until I am like Jesus, until Jesus is formed within me. Until I am loving as Jesus is loving. Until I am kind as Jesus is kind. Until I am gentle as Jesus is gentle. Until I am holy as Jesus Christ is holy. Until I am uh, spotless, wrinkleless, without any defect, as 
described in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 28. Blameless and spotless and without any blemish. That is God's dream for you and for me. It is not somehow we must reach heaven. That is a very poor uh, uh, imagination. That is not what God wants. God wants us to have a glorious entrance into his presence at his coming. If we are dead before he comes for the church, then when he comes to rapture the church, we shall be resurrected with a resurrection and glorious body. And our entrance into his presence must be a very glorious one. And if we are still alive, we will be changed and we will be transformed. And we too shall receive the resurrection body. And my friends, Zacchaeus was everything opposite to what is described in Ephesians chapter 25, verses 25 to 28. I mean 30. Everything opposite. Why? Zacchaeus forfeited his birthright. To be a son of Abraham, that's what his birth was. But as he grew up, he lost all the privileges and the blessings of Abraham because of his choice. He made bad choices. And that choice made him greedy and more greedy and covetous, pleasure-loving and unloving of others. He didn't care. And he took more taxes as he became a tax collector from people than it was necessary. Why? Because he wanted to heap up riches upon riches for himself. Though Abraham's son, entitled for all Abrahamic blessings, but lost all until Jesus met him. And when Jesus met him, what happened? He was restored to that Abrahamic covenant and through that covenant he was also restored to all the blessings included in that covenant. Hallelujah! What a blessing! And thus Zacchaeus was changed, transformed and became again connected with Abraham and his blessings. That is what Christ can do. It is not Zacchaeus meeting Jesus, but Jesus met Zacchaeus and met his greatest need. And may the Lord bless you as you meditate on what you heard this morning. There is a great blessing waiting for you, my brother, my sister. God or oh Jesus Christ is already to restore you to himself so that all the blessings of divine blessing and heavenly blessings that God has planned for you and dreaming for you to enjoy them all will be restored to you and you will be a partaker of the divine nature and divine blessings and which will entitle you for eternal life when you shall spend your eternity with Jesus Christ and reign with him. You are meant to rule in eternity. God bless you as you meditate and yield yourself to the plan of God. O oh Lord God, we thank you for all what you have already planned for each one of us. May we, Lord, not be careless but with careful and thoughtfulness, we shall yield ourselves to your will so that your will be done in our lives. And that will is that we be changed and be like Jesus. Thank you, Father. May this be our blessings and future. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you, my friends. This is a great day. 
Have a great and wonderful day ahead. Amen.